7 here. So what we got going on today is we got the 259D up on the trailer. And the only problem is it's stuck up there. We got to get it down and it doesn't move on its own because uh, the final drive line, the main line that we can see right here on the other side wore through, all the fluid leaked out. Um, and so we somehow got it up on the trailer, but now it's stuck up there and doesn't come down. And so what we're gonna do is what we have up there is a strap uh, up on the back, uh, lift points, and up here on the front, I know those are not the lift points, the, the original lift points are designed for up here, but I do not have those eyes that go up there. And so we're gonna make do with strapping it up here um, on the tie down, the tie down points here. And hopefully that'll do the trick. So um, I'll show you what we got. These are just uh, lift straps uh, rated for the, the right amount of weight. So I got a couple uh, clevises here and our lift point right up here. So I know what cat uh, designed to be the lift point is uh, you take out these two bolts, you put an eye in here on the other side too. Um, and then another way is uh, you can put an eye back here, but anyway, we don't have those. And so we're gonna make do with what we do have here. And we're gonna try to lift it with the 544 over there. So what happened was the hydraulic line that we see right here, this main one going into the back of the final drive, uh, got a hole wore through down on the underside of the frame. And once we pop the cab, we'll be able to see that. But there's a hole in this line under the cab there. Uh, the fluid leaked out and now is not able to hold any fluid. And so that is why we can't move the machine. And so we're gonna strap this up and do our best to take it off the trailer with a 544. I think it'll work. Oh yeah. That's my dad's loader. He uses it for snow removal. He's got his 14-foot uh, box on there. Good-looking machine. That'd be smart. Yeah.
set down on the ground here. Worked out pretty good with our strap points and everything. And we couldn't get the end of the chain in this hole here, so we had to just hook it on the edge of this bucket here, which seemed to work out. Took a little hammering action to get the hooks back off, but it worked out well. So now all we got to do is jack it up and then pop these tracks off, fix the hydraulic lines once the tracks are off. Hopefully we don't have to spread the undercarriage, but we may have to. Uh, the dealer said that's the way they typically do it, but they said it might work by taking the tracks off too. So we're gonna try that because these are our uh, winter tracks and we gotta swap them out for summer tracks here soon uh, anyhow. And so might as well do it all if we can right away. So we had the tracks out behind that barn, and so we uh, drove the loader out there to pick them up, because if you've ever moved tracks, you know they're super heavy and not fun to drag around by hand. So, yeah, you can come forward. We can probably dump them there. There they are, our summer tracks. So you might be wondering why the loader's levitating. But uh, what we did is I used a bottle jack. We got an eight ton bottle jack, put it up in the front, jacked it up, put the jack stands right under there. And then uh, brought the jack around here jacked up the back end and then uh, blocked it up and all because of this little guy it's kind of handy so now what we do is we go in this um you've seen the my other video about taking the tracks off we go in this plate uh, take the grease out that'll bring the idler in and then the tracks will pop off and we get to put uh these ones on so we got all our tracks off here these are the winter tracks we just took off, and these are the summer tracks uh, that we used last year. Those will get put on. And uh, something kind of cool, if you haven't seen this before, uh, the Zerk that you take out is right in here. You take that out, and then um, what I do is I actually jump on the track right about here, and then it kind of just pushes this idler in. Um, and then the grease comes out. And so where this pushes in is right along here. It uh, it slides in here and then uh, the grease comes out. And these giant springs, I don't know if you can see in there, there's a big uh, spring that helps pull it in. And so now what we're gonna do is uh, head over to this side. This side is the one, this hose right down in there. That's the one with the hole in it. So what we're gonna do is uh, replace that one. So it goes from the top of the uh, final drive in through this hole, and then up along here, it's this one right here. It comes up here, and I believe it's this, this fitting right here, right into the pump. So that's the one for that. And then also, this one down here. This is the trickier one to get at. Um, hopefully you can see this one right up here. So that elbow there goes down to uh, this bottom hose under here, which comes on the inside of the cab here, which is this hose. And it comes up uh, let me find it. it comes up on the bottom and I believe it's that fitting right down there so pretty easy to trace but not as easy to take off because it's all the way up in here so so we'll have to see uh, I'm gonna try replacing that line with uh, or just by taking the tracks off 
but yeah now it's easier to see what my dealer told me um, sometimes they do is there's a torsion bar here and then of course this one here you pop those bolts off take these ones off and then this entire undercarriage slides out a little bit um, and if you take it out too far they say it, it falls off um, which sometimes it's a pickle to get back on so hopefully we can leave it on we're gonna see what we can do so I'm gonna get to taking the lines off so as I've been taking these lines off one thing I have noticed let's just kind of come down in here quick one thing I have noticed cat has not done the best job at their line placement there's a lot of different lines rubbing um, I think this one is coming through. You can feel the wires actually on this side. Uh, and I think that's why this, this dust stuff is up here. I think the, the, this line might actually be spraying the side here, and then the dust collects there, as well as there's kind of runs that you can see coming down here. Um, I think this line might be leaking. But what I'm gonna do, because this is a pretty easy access one, you just pop the cab, and then uh, this goes up into the back, the engine compartment back there, uh, through the firewall. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wrap this one. I got some uh, hose. I'm going to wrap this one, and then uh, hopefully that one will last longer so I don't have to replace that one right away. Um, but it is a good thing to keep an eye on. And, yeah, a bunch of these lines, like, um, I don't know, this one's probably really difficult to see. This one's kind of wearing through down here. There's a little spacer that's actually wearing through or making that one wear through and um, a couple different lines different places just even these two lines kind of rubbing on each other and so I'm not overly impressed in how they have uh, kind of designed their line setup but it's not terrible but it is definitely a hassle if you're out in the field, out in the job, and then you uh, start losing a bunch of fluid because the line broke. So that's definitely not fun, but uh, it is what it is. So we're gonna go around, check all the lines, and uh, if they look like they're rubbing on someplace, um, I'll actually show you the lines that we got. So my brother-in-law does pit pumping, and so for his drag lines, if you know anything about that, uh, we got a piece of a drag line here So That's what that is. I think it's a six inch line um, It's just a good solid uh, I don't know if that's a quarter inch thick probably um, Good solid rubber So that's what that is. That's what I'm gonna cut up and then uh, zip tie around the lines to strengthen those a little bit So we got all the new lines on, looking good and everything uh, doesn't leak at all, so that's nice. So the lines that don't have this spiral wrap on it, um, which only the new lines came with that, um, we took this drag line hose and wrapped all the lines that were in danger of wearing through uh, with this hose, zip tied it up. And so now this line was rubbing right on the frame um, the hose had a little wear on it. Um, yeah, for example, this hose came down and was wearing on the back side of this T here. It's a little dark, the sun's kind of setting, but hopefully you can kind of see that. And then uh, all the way through here, we shoved a big piece of that uh, hose through there. Uh, zip tied everything snug, and so it doesn't really move around, or won't really move around a whole lot. And so. I'm feeling really comfortable about that. Uh, I'm gonna sleep a little better tonight knowing that my hoses are taken care of. And so, and then with the help of my brother, we got these summer tracks back on and looking really good. It went really fast. We actually used a come along this time, uh, strapped it up there and they uh, popped right on. It was great. And what we did to get this back hydraulic line on, uh, it, this was the more difficult one, we did have to take the undercarriage out a little bit. We didn't drop it all the way out, but what we did was we did take out those bolts on that torsion bar and also this one back in here. And we were able to slide the undercarriage out 
uh, probably probably two inches, two and a half inches, uh, so we could get another or get enough room back there. So we took a crow's foot and uh, got that off, put the new one back on, and it wasn't that difficult. So um, it was it was kind of nice. We didn't have to go ahead and. Uh, drop the whole undercarriage off of the torsion bar there because that would have been really difficult to get back on um, But other than that it went really smoothly um, I couldn't have been happier how it turned out really it was uh, a lot easier than um, Than I was thinking it might turn out to be So now it's just a matter of pumping the tracks full of grease pumping a bunch of grease back into that zerk where we saw it was coming out earlier and uh, then of course um, all this clearance will get uh, taken out because uh, I think this is pretty much pushed back as far as it'll go so what I like to do is pump them up and so and the entire machine is suspended uh, in the air off those jack stands and the blocks in the back and so um, I like to leave uh, inch or two on the bottom under here uh, Then it's always good to drive the machine a little bit and then check it again just to make sure your tracks are uh, Not too tight or not too um, Loose if they're too tight they wear on the undercarriage uh, Or wear faster make it wear out faster. Um, they mess up the sprocket a little bit more um, And if they're too loose then of course you have trouble with the uh, the tracks popping off in the field, which uh, that's no fun. That is no fun to fix out there. So I'm gonna leave the cab up for tonight and then come back in the morning, kind of wash everything off. Um, Cause this, we're just got wrapped up with the winter season. So I'm sure there's salt in there and uh, other kind of yucky stuff that we don't really want on there. So um, hopefully it was fun seeing the loader get uh, slung off of the trailer. That was a kind of a first time for us, so uh, I handled it really well. That uh, 544G um, handled it no problem. So that was kind of fun to do. And so I got to run in the house and eat some uh, eat some dinner. So I'll catch you guys around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. Um, if you want, hit the subscribe button and uh, all that good stuff if you want. Uh, otherwise. Ask me some questions. If you have any questions, hit me up uh, in the comments below on social media, Instagram, whatever. Um, and I will be happy to respond. So, thank you guys. Have a good night. What's that? That's an out pro as well. Oh. Not a map. Oh, without even looking. <laughs> yeah, without even looking. Hey, Boda. Come here, doggy. Oh my goodness, cute little doggy, little fluffy doggy. Oh yes, 